I actually have a fortune cookie uh, that's uh, framed in my home that says uh, to teach is to learn twice. And I really, truly believe that, even though it's out of a fortune cookie. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast with Jeff Lydix. I'm your host, Jeff Sauer. Today, for our 22nd episode, we will talk with Elizabeth Marston, the 2016 Search Marketing Madness winner and Director of Paid Search at Commerce Hub. I've been following Elizabeth's career for several years now, but we haven't met in person to this point. That'll all change at the awesome MN Search Summit event at the end of this month. I'm honored that she came to speak at MN Search, since that's an organization that's near and dear to my heart. It was great to hear Elizabeth's story firsthand, and I couldn't help but be inspired by the way she took an opportunity and ran with it. I'll give you the setting. The year was 2006, and Ian Lurie from Portant, who you might know as the important guy, was looking for an office manager. Elizabeth didn't get the job, but she sure did end up with a career. Now, I don't want to spoil any of her story, so I'll have Elizabeth say it in her own words. Our talk was a trip down memory lane for me. We started doing PPC right around the same time and came of age during the same era as well. The journey from a one-person PPC jack-of-all-trades to a team leader for an entire interactive department with a VP title It takes you in many directions, and I think it's really helpful for you to listen to how Elizabeth Marston rolled with the punches and how she has turned it into a very thriving career. But first, I wanted to give a word from our sponsor. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably interested in search marketing and analytics. And if you're like me, you probably enjoy finding the insights from your data much more than pulling the reports. To be honest, reporting is a drag, it's time-consuming, and It's really one of those necessary evils that if I could take my time and turn it into zero, I'd do it. So how do we cope with that time-consuming reporting piece? Well, you can become a master in Excel, like Elizabeth advocates. But not only that, you can also speed up your process through automation. And so one of the most loved tools by search marketers is the Supermetrics Data Grabber. You can pull data from Google AdWords, Facebook, Bing, and Twitter, and you can use it to create reports in minutes. So by doing this, you can get days of productivity back every single month, and there's really no end to the possibilities. So if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you to go to jefflytics.com slash supermetrics to check out their offerings. And now, on to Elizabeth Marston. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash Elizabeth. Okay, we're here today with Elizabeth Marston. Elizabeth, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear your story and your journey, and I thought maybe we'd start out with the question, just just knowing or just getting to understand what got you interested in this career of paid search, since you're all over the place, you've been doing a lot of um, thought leadership. Where did you first get started? Where did you find this was the career for you? So when I started in paid search, it was 2006, and I started at a small agency um, near my house called Portent, or Portent Interactive, as it was called at the time. And actually, I interviewed for office manager. And the reason that I did was because I was previously in law firms doing uh, HR work, uh, facilities, and file clerk, project assistance, that kind of thing. But I was actually allergic to the firm that I was at, so I needed to leave that building because I was actually like, my face was like swelling up in a very uncomfortable way. Go figure. So I go on disability and I'm like, all right, well, I need a job. And I needed one that was close to my house because I was tired of commuting. So I actually only applied to Portant because I was tired of commuting and it was 12 minutes from my house. Um, I applied for office manager. I go in, I interview and they didn't give me the job. And so I left and I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'll go work for Starbucks. And then they called two days later and said, would you be interested in being a paid search analyst? I had no idea what it was, <laughs> so I Googled it, uh, and it said, and I Googled, the, actually what they said was pay-per-click, and I thought they said pay-per-clip. Oh, nice. So I Googled it, and it says, did you mean pay-per-click? And I was like, yeah, probably. And so I clicked on the link and started reading what it was, and I thought, oh, yeah, I could do this. Um, and so they brought me in with zero experience. I mean, I literally didn't know what it was <laughs> and handed me a binder that had sections in it. And in one of the sections, you know, it had Google AdWords in it. And uh, over there was a section for Yahoo Overture <laughs> to date that a little bit. And Bing MSN Ad Center wasn't even a thing at the time. That's amazing. That's how that's how the world was back then, right? Yes. Uh, I remember my CEO sending me a link 
and saying, this is going to change everything. And I was like, uh, okay, see, so let's see what this is. And it was the link for Google Analytics 2.0. Nice. It was it was brand new, and I couldn't. You know, it took me a while to figure out how to use it. But once you figure out how to use it, it was I couldn't imagine using anything else. Absolutely, um, it's it's funny. I, I actually learned SEO out of a binder as well. So somebody had printed <laughs> out like a two hundred page. It could be the same binder. <laughs> yeah, two hundred page ebook on SEO, and I read through that thing. And I, first of all, I thought it was archaic back then that I had that he had printed two hundred pages into a binder, but I didn't ask questions. But yeah, that's exactly how I learned how to get started in this stuff too. That's hilarious. Yes. And I, and I learned on the job. Like, it was total immersion. They put me through, I read the binder, and then they said, here are some accounts. And I went, oh, okay. Wow, that's that's cool. So how do you think that they, like, obviously, having been on the hiring side a few times, a lot of times people will come in as candidates and, and I'll say, I don't love them for this job, but I like their skill set or I like what they have to say. So do you think that might have been what they did there? Did you ever hear any feedback later on as to what you did in that interview that made them interested in having you in pay-per-click? They thought I was overqualified for office admin. Mm -hmm. They thought I would be bored. And they were right. I would have been very bored uh, as the office manager. And they thought I could, uh, based on, I guess, what we had in that conversation, that I'd figure it out. Huh. So what, like, what do you think, like, is it a curiosity? Is it a certain skill? Did you... Intellectual curiosity. Yeah. So one of Porton's um, big... Uh, culture values was intellectual curiosity and you know and it became one of mine too so when I hire for for paid search that is near and dear to my heart top of the list that ability to go in and look at something and just and go whoa but why and Mm -hmm. take just even just even dig one more level two more levels uh, to figure out what it is and that intellectual curiosity can drive so much especially if you don't know (laughs) if you don't know what it is you're doing yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that that and that skill lends itself well to all aspects of of marketing. To be honest, I mean everything, analytics, especially coding, everything. If you are curious as to why it did that, you're going to just have such deeper understanding as to how these things work and how to manipulate it to get the results you're looking for. Yes. So how did that work with you know? So obviously you're learning about it. You're you're getting as much experience, and you're probably thrown into accounts. What were your steps to go from you know just being curious to being becoming an expert? So I started reading a lot, obviously. So you read, you know, and then I went for AdWords certification. And you know, in full disclosure, I failed it the first time. <laughs> the very first time I took that AdWords exam, I failed it. Uh, only by I think three points or something like that. But you know, you, and at the time they charged money for that. Yep. That was a fifty dollar failure. And to go back and ask the company for more money to do it again. Um, and they had one guy that they hired like a week after me that had actually done paid search in some capacity before. And so I did learn a little bit from him, although in order to find it, I had to like pound him to get the information. I remember the first time I saw dynamic insertion brackets, I had to, I asked, well, wait, what is, what is that? Why don't you tell me what those things are? And so uh, because he wasn't forthcoming with the information, that's where I started to get more into just honestly reading all of the articles, the, the study guides or the, the, the modules that AdWords uh, made, um, there was a I there was a Yahoo one. I am, I am technically a Yahoo search ambassador, circa two thousand seven. Nice. Which of course they don't have that product anymore. But I remember the second question had to do with the basically the answer was well Yahoo's the greatest. Um, <laughs> I just remember remember that. Um, but and then of course um, the CEO that we had at the time, uh, our CEO Ian Lurie, uh, was a big uh, voice in the SEO industry in particular, but also at the time knew a lot about paid search. So I learned a lot from him as well. Great. So, so obviously you were given the chance and then you do do whatever you can. Did you have a lot of time to experiment on clients? Was there any, was there any interaction in that sense? Like, did you learn on the job as well? Or was it mostly reading to the point where you're like, I think I can try these things. How did you take this, this knowledge and put it into action? I literally learned on the job. Yeah. So I'm a, so there's, you know, folks have a, uh, they have a style of learning. Mine is, uh, learn by doing. So they gave me those accounts. I uh, had a base understanding and then just kind of, uh, left. And so from there, um, the nice thing was, is I wasn't overloaded. So I had like three or four accounts on a per week basis and they weren't very big. So I mm-hmm. had a lot of time to kind of stare at things and try to start trying things. And then um, as we got more mature as a service, started to better document. So I started in OneNote 
that I still have a copy of from 2006 where I start writing down like what it is that I did mm -hmm. and then like a week later what happened. Because back then when it first, first started, there wasn't a Google Analytics. All the reports were coming out of AdWords. Yep. And so I had to keep track of what went up and what went, went down. And sometimes it was literally, you know, three cents here. And then sometimes it was like 30 cents. That seems like an awful lot to change. But, uh, you know, when uh, ad copy screenshots, big time, mm -hmm. I would take pictures of what worked and what didn't work and then start to kind of piece together um, patterns. Yeah. And did you, like, as far as working, though, did you, was it enough that you had conversions defined and you had all that stuff in place? Or was it more like just understanding the mechanics of, like, how a click-through rate impacts your cost per click, that type of stuff? What what type of experimenting were you doing? So a lot of it was, it was really basic because um, AdWords conversions weren't in the AdWords interface yet. So you had kind of a, at least not from a sales perspective, so you had CTR. So I was always supposed to increase CTR and lower CPC. That was mm -hmm. literally what I worked on um, for the at the beginning uh, for every client on what I was supposed to do. And then later when I got analytics access, then you can start doing things like, all right, number of orders or revenue or leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the interesting thing here is it, it sounds so basic, but actually spending time doing an experiment where if I change the bid by three cents or 19 cents or, or $2 and then giving yourself that feedback loop is such a valuable experience in this whole process. I think that you have to be a self-starter or a learner to really enforce yourself to do that. But it's so valuable because if you see that enough times, you start to really understand how Google works. Like you understand how they're going to react to what you do and you can make much better decisions based on that process. So I think there's a lot of value in that manual process. Absolutely. And then you develop kind of a gut sense after a while. So, you know, I celebrate 10 years in the industry and I will say that, you know, given any AdWords account, I can usually drop in and take a look and go, okay, well, given all things that I know, this is probably what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. And that, I think that's a great, great value. And I, I mean, anybody who's looking to, to get started in this area, that's the type of understanding that, that you want to get to. And it doesn't, it, there's not enough books in the world to teach you that. There's not, I mean, I can tell you that, Elizabeth can tell you that, but what it comes down to is hands-on experience. Just just being paying that close of attention to if I do this today, what happens tomorrow? What happens next week? What happens into the future? That journal, whatever you want Absolutely. to call it, is so valuable. And I, I like the way you're going about it or the way that you went about it, obviously. <laughs> That's great. And so did you use any software to get you along the way? Did you, use, did you find ways to make yourself more efficient? Were you able to grow the number of accounts you had? How did that process work? So one thing was uh, I got faster just in general, um, navigating through through the interface. AdWords Editor was invented. That helped. Um, we didn't actually have a bid management platform at the time. I didn't have one until it was about three years in mm -hmm. before we got anything like that. And we didn't have all the clients on it either because of a, a cost mm -hmm. uh, re restriction. Um, so we got better at editor, doing things in bulk, doing some things in Excel, uh, uploading that way. Um, and then of course, analytics, you know, you were able to start saving reports and like having them scheduled in an email to yourself. Um, and then eventually, I think it was 20, 2008 or 2009, somewhere around there, they launched dashboards. So once you had the dashboard view, I mean, that obviously sped things up quite a bit mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And just keep on improving upon that. So how did you, we talked about how you define success and, and what you were going after. How did you turn that into success at the company? How did you take the company or your, did your team go from like just you and, and maybe a couple other people to it looks like you were managing the team, VP, thought leader? How, did the, how do you, how do you yeah. describe that progression? So it started out with the guy that was there when I started. He left. Uh, it was one of the best days ever. Um, and there were a couple other folks that we had hired and we just kind of started to get together. We had regular team meetings. You start sharing resources that you find online and then you start to build that book across that book of clients, the similarities. Okay. This worked for this. Everybody try it. Uh, Google rolled out this new thing. Everybody try it. I mean, we would, everything, um, anything new that came out, I mean, we were dying to take the bubble wrap off of, and, and we'd, we'd say, all right, who can be the first to break mm -hmm. it? Uh, more than anything else. So we would, that, that experimentation and that intellectual curiosity was what drove a lot of the growth around the team. 
and around the kind of people that we attracted as well. So I actually ended up building a internship program that fueled a lot of our um, staff because, you know, this, it was hard to find somebody who had previous paid search experience. Uh, it's easier now than it used to be, um, but then that internship program really helped set a foundation to continually have a bench of folks coming in and learning, but also uh, take off some of that day-to-day uh, -day work so that I could concentrate on bigger things like overall strategy or uh, budgeting. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good way to go about it is to bring people in that maybe that have that skill set you're looking for and a few of them may turn into the people that you work with well into the future. And I think that with yep. you know it takes a certain type of person that wants to do this day in and day out. And so if you can find that person, it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, and I actually um would have uh so we had a couple of other activities around that as well so like writing for the blog or um internal presentations to the company uh i even instituted origami time once nice. uh for for a while like every week on a thursday afternoon just because it can get very tedious the kind this kind mm -hmm. of work and so i didn't want people to you know want to put their heads through a wall so trying to break it up a little bit and and look at it more instead of uh you know from this data entry standpoint more of a marketer and grow those folks into thinking like marketers instead of just paid search, like in that tunnel, right? And that was one of the nice things about working for a full service agency is we were exposed to SEO, we were exposed to analytics, we are exposed to social. Mm -hmm. For sure. So you, you built up the team. Obviously, you rose through the ranks in the organization and, and took on not just PPC, but it sounds like other things and, and built things out. How did you stay engaged in the game then how did you you know once you've learned these things i think that it is pretty repetitive and you talked about with having employees how do you keep out of the repetitive how did you stay interested in it how do you keep on learning and innovating with with what you're doing here so it was hard so one of the things that i had to give up um once i started doing like director of search senior director of search where i have the other disciplines outside of paid search it was really hard to stay on top of uh all the new yep. things that roll out constantly. Um, and I was directly managing the paid search team still. So while I might have had assistance for, you know, managing the SEO team or managing social, paid search was all still me. Um, so what really helps is that I actually really love it. Like I love, I love the concepts of it. I love the way that it works. I love the people that are involved in it, like the different thought leaders. Uh, and when you have that kind of community, whether or not you're engaged in it uh, you know, in the, in the forefront where I am, where I'm big and loud, or you're just listening in, it is a very friendly community in that way. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of shared learnings that goes on. There's a lot of, um, encouraging, uh, folks to just ask questions. Is anybody else seeing this? I broke this. Um, did you try this? That kind of thing. And it, it also helps that I just, uh, I found, if I found something that I liked and I didn't want to give yeah. it up more than anything else. So you start to try and find ways and make space and it helps, for example, you know, the, the advancement of mobile devices more than anything else. So I just had a baby and I'm back at work now, but for the last three months, um, I technically wasn't at work. Well, you can't disappear from the paid search industry for three months and come back and go, Hey guys, what yeah. I miss? Um, cause the answer's been so long. So I kept on top of things why like Twitter, Facebook, uh, search engine land, PPC hero, like just those, those main, uh, sources of, uh, news. And I just had them on my phone and I would just f catch, catch the high level stuff and keep, keep track of what's changed and what's new. And then, all right, make notes to follow up on that when I get back. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. You can't, I mean, you, you can take a day off, you can take a week off, but taking three months and taking too long, there's a lot that changes and it can catch up with you and the things that were working might not be working anymore. And that, I agree with you, what you yeah. said about community. I think that the paid search community is one of the best ones that I've been a part of because it's a super giving community. Everybody seems to be accepting of ideas and everybody's just sharing things in order to make it better. It might, it's probably because competition is sort of relative with paid search. Like even, you know, SEO is competitive almost directly. Like if you work on one client, you're competing with the other one, but paid search, um, it's hard to tell who you're competing with directly. And it's more like, let's just make us all better at this. Cause if we all do this the right way, we should all, we shouldn't be too competitive because we're all trying to capture customers, that type of stuff. And 
And we're all, I mean, you know, and underneath it all, we're all competing yeah. with each other. Like, you know, especially at the agency C level. And in, in some of cases, we've traded clients back and forth or traded accounts. But there is kind of a unspoken, um, you know, don't be mm-hmm. a jerk kind of kind of thing. You don't need to go out and in the industry and say, oh, so-and-so, you know, I inherited one of their accounts. And boy, they sure <laughs> don't know what they're doing. No. Yeah. <laughs> You save that for yeah, the bar. Exactly. That's for after the conference. So, so speaking of conferences and speaking, I mean, that's sort of where I've come to know you. Obviously, I think we are both working at an agency in our respective cities. You know, building up and being a being important to our agency. How did you expand beyond that to become uh, not just you know really strong in your in your agency, but also in the community in general? So I had help. So I was talking about um, Ian Lurie, who is the, the president and CEO of Portant. Uh, he actually, you know, I wrote, co-wrote a dummies book with him and four other gentlemen. And the, how I got into that was he knew somebody and that somebody had a book agent and he'd written a dummies book before. And he came to me, just said, hey, you want to write a dummies book? I thought he was kidding. <laughs> and I said, oh, OK. OK, sure. Why not? And that's literally how I've gotten into everything in search. I've just said, OK, why not? And that is, I, I think... Not saying no has probably gotten me a lot Mm -hmm. of where I am today is um, taking chances on certain things. And, you know, and I've had things like I'll pour 20 hours into and it totally falls flat. Um, But then I've had things that have been wildly successful. Like um, the first time I pitched to speak at SMX Advanced, um, I had never thought of doing it before. But one of the SEOs who sat across from me said, you're good. You should do it. And I said, okay. And I pitched and couldn't believe that I got into advanced on the first try. And that was because uh, Matt Van Wagner of Find Me Faster decided to take a chance on somebody on an, on an unknown. He liked the pitch and it turned out that I wasn't too bad. So it just kind of goes from there. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it, it sounds like you had some people helping you out along the way, telling you well, whether it was your idea or their idea or just like a collaborative idea. But it's like you have people who you can bounce ideas off of who can elevate yeah. what you're doing. And, and you just have the, that concept of community. It seems like that was really helpful for you both in your company. And then I'm guessing outside of it too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and just uh, my new position at commerce hub, while I technically took a uh, demotion in title, cause I'm not a VP of search. I'm a director of paid search, but I've decided to go back and take a couple steps back and specialize deeper into paid search, but at a bigger level. So we work with, I work with bigger, bigger clients and bigger data sets and bigger budgets as a result. And, and it does allow me to focus more on paid search directly. Uh, that was the, the downside of being a VP of search is I had everything. And so it's really actually quite difficult to change, to, to, to mentally flip between that many disciplines uh, in a, in a yeah. day, like I'd go from a meeting with a paid search person and then I'd have an SEO issue and then I had to find out what content was doing and then, Hey, how are we going to grow the analytics department? And then at the end of the day, I just was so fried, um, that going back to paid search and then not only going back to paid search, but going to paid back to paid search with a tool set, mm-hmm. uh, was the, the next step for me so that I can get better at, um, and you know, from the advice of Brad Geddes, who is one of the top, top paid search, uh, thought leaders, he said that was one of the best things that he did for himself in his career was uh, to get better acquainted and understand how product development yeah. works. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I remember talking to Brad around right when he just got started with the product and, and to see it now. It's so fascinating to see how that's really helped him out as well. It's a big yeah. focus of his. I'll have to get him on the show sometime too because he is, he's a good, good guy and he's always got such great advice. So how do you – like? I mean, I'm really interested in this whole part of just like being around people who can who can give advice and then giving advice to others too. So how how is how have you paid that forward to other people in the industry? Do you is do you consider speaking to do that, or is it more the hands on during your job? How do, how does that part work? It's the so the speaking part puts you in the position of availability more than anything else. So actually, those some of those present presentations I know are used like. Uh, later on and I'll never know kind of thing. But I do know that afterwards I'll, I'll often talk to folks at conferences or I'll get uh, something on Twitter or uh, LinkedIn just kind of asking that question, participate in a Twitter chat group as well, PPC chat. And then 
that I feel in a sense is a little bit giving back. And then I also have a lynda.com course. And in it, I really encourage attendees, you know, if you've got a question or something wasn't clear or you just want to uh, say, hey, is this still the thing? You know, reach out to me. And that information is in the Linda course. And several folks over the years have reached out. And I'm really glad when they do that because otherwise I'm creating this content and it goes into a black yeah. hole. And I have no idea, was it useful? Did I waste my time? Can I make it better? Uh, did I wander off track probably <laughs> seven times in it? And, you know, that feedback is also appreciated. But, um, you know, in the same way to to giving to the community, giving back to the community, um, I hope to get that feedback from them as far as you know what what they're finding useful. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you know sometimes people vote with their eyeballs. Like if it's good, then people will find it and people will share it and that type of stuff. Um, sometimes people won't give you the negative feedback, but I think that you know doing a class is really a good way to. What I found is to to teach it gives you a really good way of structuring and understanding and, and really solidifying your own knowledge when you can, when you can yeah. share it with others. I actually have a fortune cookie, uh, that's uh, framed in my home that says, uh, to teach is to learn twice. Nice. And I really truly believe that. I love that. Even though it's out of a fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to have to be like the audio bite that we play at the beginning of the podcast. Cause that's, that's perfect. Right. I, I like that a lot. I live by it. I, I find it to be very, very true. Yeah. So I, I like the progression from obviously almost 10 years ago to the day somebody wrote you an email or what they, they called you up and said, you're not right for the job. And then two days later, they said, do you want a job in pay-per-click? Now we're almost 10 years later and, and you know, you went all the way to VP of search marketing, being at all these conferences. Where do you see things going for you and in, in your career in the future? And, you know, it's funny is I just had that conversation with my new boss here at Commerce Hub. Um, you know, we were talking about, do I go, which track do I want? Do I want more of a CEO track or a CMO track? And I actually didn't know until he asked the question. And I actually said CMO. Uh, I would like to do more in marketing itself, um, you know, not just paid search, but how paid search applies to and kind of a level above that as far as where the industry is headed, especially the e-commerce and the, the retail space. So when you start to look at, okay, so now we have to, to get beyond just, all right, so Google now has expanded headlines or now you can bid for, for a tablet separately and kind of, kind of pull up a couple of levels and say, okay, why, what does it mean? What are, what are we looking at in the bigger, in the greater picture? Um, how does that impact uh, your budget for the year? How does that impact your budget for all online advertising? Mm -hmm. For the year, how does it impact what you're going to carry in stock? Um, what are you going to invest in? Uh, what, do you need to expand your assortment? Do you need to uh, add more channels? Like, what what does that mean? Yeah, I mean that, that and that's the whole that's the thing, right? Because I think that a lot of times as paid search, it's it's nice that it's accountable and that we can put a dollar in, and usually we can get anywhere from a dollar ten to to ten thousand dollars back, whatever type of product we're selling or service we're providing. But I think that that's, that's sort of like a, it's a silo until you make it part of your overall marketing plan. Like that can be independent of what's happening there. Um, it can be, your paid search can be influenced by these, all these other things. So you're saying like, I want to have a part in all that. I want to be involved with all that extra stuff that's around it in order to really tie it all together. Well, and to ignore you know, and, and to live in that vacuum is it, we can't do that anymore. We just we just can't. Um, when you look, and I hate saying the word omni-channel marketing, which is the the buzzword of the day, but in a sense, it's 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 true. You've got, you know, somebody watching TV who's also on their laptop and their phone. You know, I mean, like there's three devices alone involved there, plus you know, social channel, plus uh, uh, maybe they also interacted through organic search. Maybe they visited the site two years ago. I mean, it's kind of and and maybe there's a brick and mortar store that they go to. So to 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 try and just stay in that that tunnel i can't do yeah. it i want to i want to get out of the yeah, tunnel absolutely i think that, i mean I've, I've noticed that as well I, since i got out of doing day-to-day -day management of, of campaigns and and started my own business it's more focused on how does paid search help the business not what is the paid search you know what paid search is a means to the ends not the ends in in many ways for for me in in recent and and i think that it, it's sort of like the cmo mentality right like you're talking about and the a cmo the difference is really that they're responsible for the overall direction of what's going on and and using paid search as like a chess piece in the game that they're playing but it might not be the game itself 
Exactly. That's cool. So um, how do you – so I, it sounds like, I mean, you sort of have an idea as to what the path might be, and I think that you're obviously well on that path. How do you factor in – or how, how does it look for others getting into this area? What what advice would you have for them looking to get in here? How, how would What would you tell them if they were looking to sort of recreate what you've been able to do? So it's interesting because – we keep changing, you know, how to get in, honestly. Um, we rarely hire people anymore for things that they've, that they don't even know the mm-hmm. name of like that. Uh, if I tried to do that today, it's probably not going to happen. Cause I know just even when I go through resumes for some of my entry level positions, um, I still look for some kind of digital experience, something with a computer, yep. um, at, at all. Um, and I do think this is where like, for example, internships become extremely valuable uh, any kind whatsoever. It doesn't have to be necessarily a paid search one. It just has to be one where you were around marketing um, or digital advertising. That helps a lot. Um, there's some self-starter stuff around the AdWords certifications and the Bing ad certifications. Just even going through that exercise and completing it and saying, hey, I, you know, I, even if I don't have any hands-on experience, I at least understand how it works. Yep. Uh, that's huge. Any, And I, I recommend classes right now over – entire internet marketing degrees, um, just simply from a cost perspective, if you don't necessarily know what it is that you're going to be getting into, that's a good way to start, uh, and, and test, test things out. So there may be a class, uh, offered through online, through a community college, through university. Um, you know, I went to the university of Washington and I know that there's a digital, uh, certificate, uh, digital advertising, digital, is it digital online. I can't remember what it is. A, a class with their continuing education, and I actually was a guest speaker one day oh, on paid search. So, and and that's what I think is going to have to happen actually in order for for paid search and other digital uh, mediums to become. I I think we I think someday we're going to have a degree in it, like in a, a you know a regular like the accredited universities kind of thing where it's just like, what did you major in? Well, I majored in English, or I majored in business. Well, I majored in Mm-hmm. digital uh, marketing or something like that. And, but in order to do that, folks like us have to go back into those schools and teach yeah. those classes. Um, and that's what I'd like to do when I retire actually. Nice. Well, I think, I mean, I, I would, you know, having done this myself, I created a digital marketing certificate program at, in, in St. Thomas and Min- Minnesota. And that's a lot of what we're doing is, is trying to get people to, get those skills, even if they don't, if they're short on the experience, you know? And, and so I think you could do it now. You could, you know, just do it a little bit or, or, you know, as you say, as you retire, do that as well. I think there's a need <laughs> for it. Um, the interesting thing is that I find that students who have no experience at all, they struggle in the class too. And, and the, what I mean by that is they struggle if they have never had any hands-on experience. They, it's hard for them to take a concept and to really, understand it fully. So I think that it's a two pronged thing, right? You need to understand the theory, read as much as you can, but then you also learn a lot by doing. And so what I always yes. recommend is either work for free and nobody, nobody wants to actually work for free, but I, I did. I mean, I, I worked for free on AdWords for about a year before I, before anybody would pay me to do <laughs> it. Um, or, or work volunteer for like a nonprofit or work something that's Absolutely. low stakes because they need your help too. I mean, every not. Yeah. Well, and then, yeah, low stakes, like you said, it's a budget, so they're not going to have a lot. They may even already be set up with like uh, yep. Google Grants or something, so it's almost like free mm-hmm. money. Uh, and then sometimes I find those, uh, I always encourage folks to find those uh, coupons, those $100 mm-hmm. or $500 free coupons. And if you get one of those, you could set up your own account for, you know, for yourself yep. to play with or for, let's say, a relative as a store or something. Just just even run just a yep. little bit. Target the names of the people who are who you sent your resume to and see if they search for themselves. <laughs> Somebody did that to me, and uh, I called that's that guy, great. and I ended up hiring nice. him. See, that's the cool stuff that, that you can do. I mean, there's so many things you can do to get experience. Even if it's not Google AdWords, I mean, Facebook's the same thing. It's it's so inexpensive to get somebody there or, you know, to target somebody, and there's so many targeting opportunities. There's a lot of things you can do to experiment now that don't cost a lot of money. And so getting that experience, though, in, in addition to the theory, is really the important piece because it's, it's harder to visualize the results if you can't get, get your hands dirty. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, another question I have for you is how much time do you traditionally spend 
like doing the the work versus working on your personal brand because I think that's a question a lot of people have is like how much time do I need to put into both my brand and then continue learning in order to keep up to date probably so part of my job to keep up to date on what's going on is is pretty is like an everyday kind mm-hmm. of thing really if you want to stay on top of it it's got to be at least 15 minutes a day just just at minimum to to do the maintenance part um the Monday through Friday kind of thing. And it, it's really lends itself well to like commute times kind of thing. So like if you ride the bus or something, it's a great way to stay, stay on top of things. Or if you're breastfeeding at four <laughs> in the morning, also a great thing, but you'll probably have to reread it later because you don't remember <laughs> what you read. Um, but the personal brand thing does tend to be more of a weekends thing. I've spent many a Sunday afternoon uh, working on presentation decks or blog posts or I have been very fortunate in many of in in my roles to have that kind of wrapped in to my job description. So um, that personal brand, while it benefits me, also benefits the company because yep. they get to put it in the sales decks. And then I say I'm from Commerce Hub and everybody wins on that one. But I wish I had more time per week to do that. On average, I probably only get to spend one to two hours a week, um, depending on if I have something due. Like if I have like next month, I have a couple presentations that are due. So I'll have to car, I'll actually carve out that time within my schedule. Um, if I don't, then I tend to, if I don't carve out that time, then it becomes all Sundays and, and weeknights and that's not yeah. good either. Yeah. The, I've, I've been stuck doing that several times. Yeah. You got, you got to just try to take what you can, right. And, and find time to do it. And then a deadline almost always makes it a priority. So if, <laughs> Yeah, I the thing I recommend most of all that folks most folks don't do is to actually book time on your calendar so people can't schedule over it. I like that. That's a good idea. Excellent. So um, I think we're nearing the end of our time, and and it's really interesting to hear how sort of just I, I, it's fascinating to me that that you could become a PPC expert and not even know what it meant when you when you got the job. So that's really really cool, <laughs> and obviously. I put it in the dummies book actually too because I wanted folks to understand that you can do it. It has actually gotten more complicated to learn it in the last five years than than in the first five years that I was mm-hmm. in. That's for sure. Holy jeez. But when you look at the base nature of what paid search is and how it works, that is still static and, and what we do with it and why we do yep, with it. Absolutely. And so – as somebody's looking, you know, obviously the same opportunity might not be there today. We talked about that a little bit about how um, when you're hiring for somebody, you're probably looking for somebody with some experience. But um, and, and obviously you've given some advice to, to how to get there. But what's your what's your prognosis for the future of, the, of this industry and where do you think things are going? I think we end up I think it's going to it's it's still competitive now. For a good paid search person, you know, with good solid experience, hands-on kind of kind of thing. So, those folks will have a job for quite a while longer. Um, AdWords keeps coming up with and all these other different tools, ways to automate. But at the end of the day, it's still a marketer that needs to make the the final calls and be able to interpret that information. So, I do see our paid search people um, needing to broaden their expertise or their their knowledge base around not just paid search, but, you know, online marketing in general, uh, social media and how that plays in and then analytics. So you start to become literally a, a marketer. It's just we've moved it online instead of offline. Yeah. So become a marketer. Any other pieces of advice you'd recommend to your maybe to your former self getting started or things you'd tell people to oh. do if they're like who to talk to or is it, you know, the value of mentorship, the value of reading, that type of stuff? I would so I if I had the chance to go back I would make myself be better at Excel. The so at the time it was very simple what we used it for like reporting and whatnot and it is getting infinitely more complex and especially with what you're able to export from all of the various analytics tools and just AdWords alone like uh, sure I don't think pivot tables existed <laughs> back then I think that that came out later but formulas and functions like to be you don't necessarily need to be able to write macros but be able to to, to nest formulas yep. man if I I really wish I had been able to spend some of that time where I was just sitting there going, all right, I'm going to move this up three cents um, that I had invested in that. And then um, kind of reading up on some of the more broader marketing topics like offline as well. So um, when you think of folks that like David Ogilvy, right, who uh, wrote Confessions of an Advertising Man in like, what, 1960-something or 1970-something or, you know, 
advertising actually in general hasn't changed all that much when you think about the psychological response and when you think about um, why people buy and, and, and those kinds of things. And so being able to understand the broader uh, uh, subject matter would have been yeah. good. No, I think so. I think as well. I mean, a lot of these principles are timeless. Scientific advertising was yes. written what, almost 100 years ago now <laughs> to the point where it's no longer – copyrightable because it's so old it's no longer protected like these things have been around for a long time and they just have a different flavor so i think yeah it's it's fine to break into the industry because you're good at at doing whatever's hot right now but at the end we all need to become marketers right we all need to focus on that that piece of marketing and the quicker you got to be able to answer the question yep. why because every time no matter what happens whether it was good or bad or something come, new comes out the question always is either from the client or for yourself should be well why great well i think that i mean there's a lot of things to think about here for for our listeners and i i learned a lot myself actually i think that i agree with a lot of what you're saying and and so and we have very similar experiences anything <laughs> else you want to add just don't know that it's a it's a growth industry um you know back in 2006 when i started um, there wasn't any, there weren't any jobs, paid search jobs really in the greater Seattle area that wasn't with like, um, uh, uh like Razorfish or one of the other agencies like mm -hmm. that. And my parents, uh, asked me cause I did all this training and they said, did you just get all this training in something that you can't get another <laughs> job in? Uh, and I actually didn't know the answer. So I had to go to the CEO and, and ask. And he said, no, 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 this is going to be, this is no, 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 no. You, and I was like, okay. <laughs> And okay, well, we'll see what happens. And he was right. Yeah, that's ex I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I tried to get a job in SEO and I couldn't get one back in the day. So I had, I had to make my own. <laughs> that was pretty much how it worked back then. But now there's there's opportunities. The industry is growing. There's not enough people, frankly, qualified to fill the jobs that are available and the people who need it. And so yeah. I like that you're doing the education, the lynda.com course speaking, all that stuff. And hopefully, you know, people listening to podcasts like this and, and going forward, they can have a lot of resources to go with. Absolutely. Well, best of luck to anyone who's uh, trying to break, break in. All right. Well, that's a, great that's a great note to leave on. And so thanks for joining us today, Elizabeth. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It was fun to hear Elizabeth's perspective on growing an agency from just one person doing paid search to developing an entire team. But it definitely parallels my work at 3D Marketing almost exactly down to the year of each breakthrough. So I hope you can find inspiration from Elizabeth's story and use it as a model for anything you're looking to do in your own career. From not even knowing the acronyms of search marketing to becoming the 2016 Search Marketing Madness winner, Elizabeth has been a student of the paid search game. Much like she is a student of Kendo, as a fifth degree black belt, I'm guessing that she can attribute much of her success to the disciplines she learned along the way. Now, if I could go back, I would have asked her a question about that, or maybe she'll follow up in the comments if she hears this part. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash Elizabeth.
destiny in your own hands Start reading a dummy's book Write blog and listen to podcasts like this And do it all while